Alright guys, Tacoma Comics here. I am tempting my first comic haul video. We'll see how it goes. Big shout out to uh, people I'm following on YouTube. Chase Variant, Holy Batgirl, Alex the Comic Hoarder. Learn a lot from that guy, the Chinist. And of course, the Doom. The Doom big enough to like and subscribe to my channel before I even had a video out. I gotta give the man props for that. It's pretty cool. Just got back from Jet City Comics show yesterday and I got a haul here I'm gonna go through today. That involves what I got at the show, plus some shops I hit uh, Friday before the show started. First up, I've got K2SO, $10. Bucks. Uh, you know, it's going for like $19.99 and Fred Meyer and whatever, and I guess they just picked up a whole bunch of them and were able to sell them cheaply. A little bit damaged to the box and stuff, so uh, not like super beautiful box, but I'm going to take it out and build it anyway, so I'm not worried about new in box. All right, I stopped by Tricky's Pop Emporium in Tacoma the other day. If you don't know the story, if you live in Tacoma, you got to check it out. Tricky's Pop Emporium. He's always got some comic books in there, usually bagged, trying to sell bundles. He points to one box and says, that box is total crap. I paid $10 for the whole box. And it was this big, long box, about three-fourths full. So I figured, aha, if I can find something in there, I can get it cheap because he told me he paid 10 bucks for the whole thing. So I so saw this... Uh, tick first full color tick uh, issue I said cool I'm gonna throw that in so I got that he had a bunch of uh, Black Panther you know Todd Neasy Coates amazing writer his run on Black Panther not the most popular I've read some issues good some issues not good I stopped after issue three or four but I'll tell you something Brian Stelfreeze on the art on the first couple of issues amazing um, and for the price I got these for, I couldn't pass up, you know, getting some more in the run. Maybe someday I'll complete it. Not the biggest run, like I said, but uh, it's okay. So seven and there's eight. It's really interesting covers too. Here's nine. And this is probably my favorite cover I've seen of the, the new run that uh, Nisi Coates is on. And that's a Brian Stillfreeze cover right there. And that's just gorgeous. And pair that up with number 10. So I got the Tick, four Black Panthers, three uh, World of Wakanda. This was a really great one. I just, uh, I never, never continued getting this, but uh, I got the first few issues. One and two were amazing. World of Wakanda is about the Adora Milaje. They're the bodyguards, uh, all women bodyguards of uh, the Black Panther, King of Wakanda. And uh, really great stories there. Roxanne Gay is an amazing writer. So there's four. And I got five and six to go with it. Pretty cool artwork on that. That kind of really pops in the light there. I like that. Five, and then there's number six. Well, and then you got Tom Nisi Coates taking over the writing there. Uh, didn't really follow too closely, so I don't know what happened to all the writers and stuff. Picked up some back issues of ElfQuest. I collect one of my original loves back in the 80s was ElfQuest. That's the kind of uh, first obsession I had, ElfQuest and Uncanny X-Men. So this was Siege of Blue Mountain number five. And number six, these are two that I didn't have. Um, I just need number seven, then I've got all eight of Siege of Blue Mountain. That was the second series that they came out with, I believe. And then the last one that I got from this guy, Trickies, was this. You know, it's a low grade, it's faded, but look at that, man. Welcome back, Cotter, comic book number one from the TV show. That's just awesome. If you grew up watching that stuff, you know, up your nose with a rubber hose and, uh, signed Epstein's mother and if none of that makes sense to you then you're just younger than I am and that's okay too. So all those comics, the Elf Quest, the Black Panther, the Tick, World of Wakanda and the Welcome Back Cotter, that'll cost me 10 bucks total but that was a pretty good deal. Went down to a new comic book shop in uh, Puyallup, I can't remember the name of it right now and got a bunch of dollar pickups, Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows variant, looks really nice right there, one dollar, not a big fan of the book or Spider-Man but uh, always go for a cool variant cover for a dollar. Same with this. I liked Kelly Sue's Captain Marvel, but haven't really kept up with it since then. This is a nice Jenny Frizen. Really interesting. Not I wouldn't even say beautiful or great cover, but just uh, different. Haven't seen stuff like this. It was a dollar, so I picked it up. Bam. And uh, my local LCS grabbed that for me. The uh, second uh, second print cover. Or yeah, second print cover for uh, Wolverine Generations. Really nice story, too. One of the better uh, generation stories, that and the Hawkeye one, I thought were great. 
I'm just going to put that there because it looks awesome. It's not from the recent haul. It wasn't a, a dollar book. It just looks awesome. Why not have an awesome comic? Um, my LCS Destiny Comics also got me uh, Destiny City Comics. Got me this. Apparently Sam Humphreys was on Twitter and just you know tweeting at all the comic book shops. DM me if you want some uh, free signed Green Lantern. <laughs> so he got a bunch and he gave me one, which I thought was really awesome. I'm not a big Green Lantern fan. Uh, don't follow the book, but I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, Half Price Bookshop. Friday afternoon, I got that one. Uh, again, going for the cool cover. Following, followed the story a little bit, but didn't collect the run or anything. Uh, you can't see it from here, but it's actually a little crinkled up here. But because it was a dollar, this might be the first book that I actually try to press and see if I can uh, clean that up and fix it. If I screw it up, it's only a dollar. Goes along with this one right here. Uh, another dollar pickup from Half Price Bookshop. Really like this one. Uh, met Willow Wilson for the second time. About two weeks ago, she was doing a talk in Seattle. She mentioned how sad this, this issue was because um, Wolverine's dying during this issue and his healing factor doesn't work and Miss Marvel's unaware of that. She's just a big fangirl of all sorts of superheroes. So I thought that was kind of touching little story to add something to that. And uh, about my third copy of this, but I'll pick these up all day for a dollar. Love Miss Marvel, which is why I went ahead and grabbed the second print here for a dollar. Got a little ding in the corner there. Light's not very good in here. I got to work on that. A little ding in the corner, lower left corner there. But uh, for a dollar, pick that up all day. And then I found this one. I'm not a speculator, but I speculated. Everybody's talking about New Avengers 27. Hawkeye is the new Ronin after Echo was the first Ronin, and that's going to be part of the new Infinity Avengers movie, Avengers Infinity movie. Not big into speculation, but for a dollar, I figured I'll grab it. Plus, it's a cool cover, right? Love that cover. Okay, we are on to Jet City Comic Show. First, let me show you what I uh, got signed. Jet City Comic Show, smaller show. You know, tickets are only 20 bucks for the weekend. I actually ended up going one day for 15 Uh Decent amount of creators there and a lot of artists. My kids had a great time talking to artists just uh, that aren't necessarily comic book artists. It was really cool. So this right here, I hadn't been picking up the Lazarus X plus 66, just kind of getting lazy on my part. But Steve Lieber was there and he was selling them and he uh, did this beautiful sketch right down here. And I just thought that was awesome. He did that in like one minute, just kind of, you know, ink lines. My sons were watching him. They're really into art and they're really amazed. And so I thought that was cool. Signed that for me. Um, Matthew Southworth was there and I had the second print of Stumptown number one. From Oni Press, really great comic, really great uh, detective comic. Don't see many comics like this, just uh, focusing on the detective work and this, this rough and tumble uh, female detective. Really great stuff, and he pointed out something cool. On the second print, he wrote thank you right here. Um, I thought that was kind of neat because he was thanks, thank you people for selling out the first one. And since he was a creator and he was selling books, and I assume these were comps he was selling to make money, I always wanted to help him out, so I bought the first... Uh, First printing, and he signed that one too at the top. I thought it was cool. He signed it in a different spot. So I got that. Really nice. And then the real thing that I wanted to get was uh, Matthew Clark was going to be there. So I took my Wonder Woman Rebirth. I've already got Rucka and Liam Sharp. And adding to that, I got now Matthew Clark and Jeremy Caldwell was there as well. So it looks like I got two signatures left, Parsons and Martin. I think they're the uh, inker and letterer or one of those. I'm not exactly sure. And then I've got the show variant right here. And uh, that one was a newer pickup, so I only got the guys from this weekend, Clark and Colwell, and a little bit of a red smudge there. So I'm not really doing this stuff for value. I'm not an investor. It's just I love meeting creators and getting them to sign my comics, so I'm okay with that. And then uh, Matthew Clark also did one of the stories in this Love is Love thing, and that's my new obsession is I'm going to try to get every single creator. There's like 100 creators here. You know, there's like 51-page stories in this, so... Uh, let me show you what he did. A little Supergirl story here, and he signed right down here. It's beautiful red. It matches the color. It's hard to tell that that's even a signature, but it was his initials right there. So pretty psyched to meet some creators and get some stuff signed. Always like doing that. And that Steve Liebert sketch on Lazarus, man. I thought that was uh, that was the best. I really like that. It kind of fit the whole thing. Looks just like the lady up there. Onto the halls. This is the big stuff. I went to three different stalls. Um, not a big DC guy or, or uh, 
metal guy, but I just wanted to point this out. I got the Red Death, and it's always a good book. I got that from my local comic shop last week. So I was looking at this one guy, and he's got all these books for a dollar. And so I got Dark Knight's Metal, number one for a dollar. Dark Knight's Metal tie-in, Murder Machine, number one for a dollar. Foil's not really popping in that light there. I don't know. There you go. Now you got the glare, though. And I got the uh, Drowning, Dark Metal tie-in, number one, for a dollar. I thought, hey, for a dollar, those are definitely worth it. They're in good condition. Uh, see, like, a little spine ticking one, no color break or anything. Mr. Miracle, variant cover for number three, one dollar. Astro City, love these books, kind of going back and picking them up as much as I can, trying to catch up. I think he's up to 43 or now. Kirk Busiek, I mean, if you're not reading Astro City, it's superheroes and villains when they're retired or when they're having their family life, their day off. It's, you know, what is a superhero like when he or she's not a superhero? Really kind of cool. Um... It's like my one-minute sales pitch. Pick this up for a dollar. I already had an, an issue, but <laughs> I'm going to get two of those all day for a dollar. Read the story. Didn't love the story. The cover has nothing to do with the story, but the cover is just pretty amazing. Um, got the next one as well. This is a pretty popular cover, but I'm not, not you know, dying for this one. I don't know. Um, Docking just, I don't know. Doesn't do it for me. Isn't this cool? Maybe it's the... Uh, the underwear over the leggings. I thought that went out with Wolverine in the 80s, but who knows. Uh, and then the last two pickups for a dollar, definitely reader versions, but, uh, you know, found Secret Wars number five and number six. And I thought, cool, get those. Those are all dollar each. Boom. Went over to the next booth, and this guy here was one of those ones who has, like, tons of comics. You know, he's obviously a dealer from somewhere. He was just setting up shop at the show. I saw this, and it was in a half-off bin listed as four dollars. You know, we had like twenty half-off boxes, and so two dollars for Fables number one first print. But when you look really close, he was, and he was honest about it, he wasn't hiding it or nothing. But you can see right there, there was some glue or stickiness when he put a price like tag on the inside. So when I took it out of the bag, it just started ripping. You know, and it was like that heartbreak. But you know, clearly there was a reason why it was listed for that much, and this right here is it still I need one through five of this series and I've got the whole thing I'll keep this till I can get a better one same with number two and you can see that one had an even worse rip so the fact that I even saw those I've never seen them you know I started collecting fables when they were on like issue 110 or something and then I started going back and trying to get them all so need one through five working on it I'll get them soon half off the cover of that or the price listed so two dollars for grass kings Grass King is a real interesting series. I love Matt Kent's stuff he writes is amazing. Um, I had first couple issues. There's four. There's five. Love the uh, colors on that. Really nice cover. And then I saw Chew number 10. I was like, wow, an early Chew for only two bucks. Great. Guess what? I already own it. <laughs> you know what? That's cool. I'll take a second Chew for $2. Number 10. Pretty cool. Uh, I've been collecting Usagi Yojimbo for a while now, probably about a year. Usually find the books for 99 cents at a half price bookstore, you know, as long as they're not too old. Um, the more recent issues in the 80s, 90s, and 100s and up. This was $2 for 54 $2 for 81 If you're not reading Usagi Yojimbo, man, it's a great, great series. Almost every issue is a self contained story, which makes it really nice. You know, he's a uh, ronin wandering the land. Obviously, he's a bunny, not a human, but uh, anthropomorphic creatures everywhere. It's 120. Just great artwork and great series And 121. And last one I got of that, sorry, 126. Last one I got of that was 134. So between, out of like a run that's up to 164, I've got about half of them now, which is really cool. Uh, another one I've been collecting and trying to finish off is Morning Glories. I do need number one. That's the third print sketch variant, but for two bucks, I'll pick it up. Still need the first print, obviously. Uh, I need the number 12, and I need the number 29, and those are two that I was able to find. So, cool. This next one is not in good condition, but it's $1.50. 
you know, it looks like somebody touched it with greasy thumbprints eating popcorn or something there. But again, this is that spec book that people were talking about, the new Avengers. For $1.50, I figured I'd pick up another one. Can't hurt. All right. Just missed this one in the run. Uh, issue 22, got it for two bucks, excited. If you're not reading the Flintstones, man, that has been a great run. 12 issues of that. Russell put out some amazing uh, political and social satire. Uh, not like it's politically charged left or right, but just politics in general and, and, and society in general. Just satire running through every single page of every issue. And this is a variant cover. I didn't have this one, so I was really excited to pick that up for two bucks. Uh, another thing I'm trying to finish off is Why the Last Man. Of course, I need one and two, which are the expensive ones. But I also needed some of the later ones, 53, 54. See, obviously, I haven't finished bagging everything. 55. And this one's really cool. The very last issue, 60. Boom. All those were two bucks each. So is Batwoman 3. Marguerite Bennett's doing a really awesome job with uh, James Tinian writing on this. 3 and 4. And then some of the more recent books this guy had out were buy one, get one for half off. So I went ahead and grabbed myself uh, this that I've been looking for for a while. Six bucks for Wonder Woman, Tasmanian Devil. Everywhere I look, that is out of that. So I was really excited to find that. And so I paired that, got this one for half off. Batwoman 7, I love that cover. That's a really cool cover. It's a variant cover. Number seven. Went ahead and got a little uh, Wickediv, Wicked and Divine, number 32. I've been reading this in trade, but everybody said issue 32 was just awesome. An amazing single issue. One of those single issues that people talk about. Getting great reviews. Four bucks, which enabled me to get uh, Captain Phasma for two. Really excited about the pricing on that. And then finally, since I got the second print, don't love this cover as much, but... Uh, that's the basic cover for Wolverine Generations. Like I said, that was one of the best generation stories that I'd read. Really, really like that story. Pretty cool. And then finally, I went over to one more booth, picking up some comics and this guy. Uh, trying to fill out my Uncanny X-Men run. Trying to, first of all, get 150 to 250. So everything that he had on the floor in the boxes was half off. They were all like fine condition, probably six, six, five, maybe sevens. So three bucks for 145. Three bucks for 147. Of course, this doesn't help me get 150 to 250. That was my original benchmark. But uh, this one is really interesting. $14. He had one on the table listed for 12. So I assume the $14 one was in better condition and it was half off. So I got it for seven. And then finally, 210 for a half off. So 450. So I'm just leaving me with like some of the big ones 221, 266. And either 212 or 213, one of the Sabretooth ones. I've got one, I don't have the other. Um, and then below 150, I'm really starting to pick up from 100 to 150. You need to get some of those big ones. First uh, first Kitty Pride, you know, first Phoenix, first Dark Phoenix, and then all the rest in between. So, got a lot of work to do to finish off the Uncanny X-Men. But like I said, that was my original love for Long Self Quest. Alright man, thanks for listening. That's my first comic book video ever. 